Welcome to part two of the discharge orientation class for blood and marrow transplant patients. This is for allogeneic transplant patients and caregivers who are preparing to leave their transplant team and return home. I'm Danae Davis, one of the long-term follow-up nurses. In this class, we will be talking about graft-versus-host disease after allogeneic transplant. Allogeneic transplant patients are at risk for chronic graft-versus-host disease, especially if you have one or more of these risk factors, such as already having acute graft-versus-host disease, or if you are a male patient that had a female donor, or if you had a mismatched donor. About half of our allogeneic patients will develop some degree of chronic graft-versus-host disease. Most chronic graft-versus-host disease is first detected in the first two years after transplant. So if somebody comes to us with symptoms common to co chronic graft-versus-host disease, but they're more than two years out from transplant and they don't have any history of chronic GVHD yet, we suspect it might be other causes to these symptoms. Acute and chronic graft-versus-host disease look and act a little differently. To determine between acute and chronic graft-versus-host disease, we look at symptoms, not strictly the day after transplant the GVHD is detected. Acute graft-versus-host disease tends to be closer to time of engraftment, has an abrupt onset, is more angry, and demands immediate attention. Chronic graft-versus-host disease is typically first detected at least 75 days out from transplant. Symptoms may be less obvious or explained away. Onset may be more gradual or subtle. And symptoms are typically caused by inflammation and then fibrosis forming in the affected body system. We will go through each body system in more detail. The treatment of acute and chronic GVHD also differs. With acute GVHD, high-dose steroids are given for a short burst and then tapered rapidly. The flare usually resolves over a few weeks or months, but can become difficult to respond. After the acute flare has resolved, there is typically no permanent damage to the body system. With chronic graft-versus-host disease, high-dose steroids are given for longer, followed by a slower taper. The activity of this of chronic graft-versus-host disease, disease is just slower. The average length of immune suppression treatment for chronic graft-versus-host disease is three to five years after the initial diagnosis is made. A steroid-sparing medication is often used to help taper steroids off quicker, but then you remain on that steroid-sparing medication longer. Recovery can take months to years, or chronic graft-versus-host disease can become stubborn to treat or affect other body systems. There is often permanent damage to the body system after chronic graft-versus-host disease activity resolves, such as permanent eye and mouth dryness or skin changes or lung damage. Chronic oral graft-versus-host disease typically starts with white lacy lines on the insides of the cheek that don't rub off if you scrub them with your toothbrush. These can be easier to see if you use a flashlight from your cell phone, since this is a blue tinted light. This can develop into food sensitivity to toothpaste, to spicy foods, carbonation, or coffee. And you might notice that your mouth burns with items that didn't bother you the week before. At the worst, it can look like the mucositis seen with intense induction chemotherapy. And we really appreciate photos of your mouth to help us look for these changes. You can email photos to long-term follow-up or send them through my chart. Chronic skin GVHD can look like acute skin GVHD with a red itchy rash, but it can also look like a lighter or darker pigmentation or shiny spots or skin tightening. The young man on the right had a sunburn that triggered a graft-versus-host disease flare, and now he has residual darker pigmentation. We also really appreciate photos of skin changes. and You can email these to long-term follow-up or send them through my chart. Chronic graft-versus-host disease can affect the joints and connective tissue, where fibrosis causes tightness. 
In these pictures, the young man cannot bend his wrists into a prayer position. He's, he's stuck up here. And if you pinched his skin, it would be very hard and not pliable at all. Sometimes we ask you to send long-term follow-up photos of your flexibility. And we compare specific poses over time, to, such as the prayer position, your arms straight out, your arms above your head, and of your ankles. And we, we look at those specific poses over time to look for changes that can be very subtle. Chronic graft versus host disease of the eye can really affect quality of life. If you have dryness and grittiness, we recommend you see an eye doctor right away because they have special lenses, special cameras to measure eye moisture. They can look for eye infections and detect graft versus host disease and recommend topical treatments. Severe eye GVHD can be painful to light and make it hard to function. We have scleral lenses now, a special type of contact lens with more surface area over the eye, so it keeps moisture on the eye to minimize irritation. Chronic GI GVHD can look like acute GI GVHD with the nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, and abdominal cramps. It can also present as unintentional weight loss and difficulty swallowing. Infections such as enteric pathogens that cause diarrhea or enteric CMV might need to be ruled out. This might mean submitting a stool sample for testing or upper and lower endoscopy. Chronic liver graft versus host disease is detected by elevated liver function tests in your blood. First, we rule out alcohol intake or medications or supplements as a cause. We might need to rule out infection, and then we treat as graft versus host disease. Men can experience chronic graft versus host disease of the genitalia, often presenting as white, white plaques and skin tightness on the penis and should be assessed by a graft versus host disease specialist or urologist. For women, chronic graft versus host disease often presents as dryness, itching, or pain with intercourse and should be assessed by a gynecologist. Topical steroids can be useful for both. Women should also consider infection and low estrogen as a cause of symptoms. Chronic lung GVHD is rare but serious. The lungs do not easily regain function, and we do have several patients that have gone on to need a lung transplant because of this. We monitor pulmonary function tests closely and rule out infections before treating with immune suppression. Chronic graft versus host disease may also cause other lab changes and fluid buildup called serositis. There can be fibrosis, like the kind that causes the tightening in the skin, that also happens in the esophagus and makes it hard to swallow. Nephrotic syndrome is a kidney condition that allows excess protein loss. Myasthenia gravis is a condition of neurological weakness and is a rare manifestation of graft versus host disease. With all of these possible problems of graft versus host disease in mind, there are things you can do to decrease your risk of graft versus host disease and to detect it early, things that you are in control over. Avoid sun exposure to reduce the risk of graft versus host disease flares. Monitor yourself for changes. A chronic graft versus host disease often develops slowly. You might be the first to notice. Stretch daily. This is a good way to monitor your joints for chronic graft versus host disease. Do your best to stay healthy, since infection ramps up the immune system and can precipitate a graft versus host disease flare. Take photos of your skin, of your mouth, and your flexibility changes to show any changes developing over time, and show these to your local healthcare providers and to long-term follow-up. Long-term follow-up is happy to help you and your local healthcare provider determine if your physical changes are graft versus host disease. We will ask you and your provider to send us photos by email, or you can send photos through my chart. And we have these handouts with tips on how to take clear photos and what parts of the body to take photos of and what flexibility poses to take photos of.
We do have topical therapies for about every body system. Topical interventions for the mouth and eyes are usually the most effective for those body systems. If you're using a steroid rinse for the mouth, make sure you hold the rinse in your mouth for several minutes to get that surface contact and then spit the steroid rinse out instead of swallowing it. And then also keep an eye out for thrush developing in your mouth. That might be a, a white coating to your tongue and a bad taste in your mouth. Massage and stretching can be helpful to break up the fibrosis of chronic graft versus host disease that tightens the skin and affects the joints. So massage can be painful while it's breaking up the fibrosis. Vaginal dilators can be helpful if tightness develops from chronic graft versus host disease. And the FAM regimen of inhalers and oral medications is very well tolerated and has been stop, shown to stop the lung function decline of chronic graft versus host disease of the lung. We have many systemic therapies for chronic graft versus host disease, and many of these may be familiar to you from acute graft versus host disease. We use prednisone, tacrolimus, cyclosporin, sirolimus, and MMF to treat acute graft versus host disease. Oral methotrexate is used for chronic graft versus host disease. ECP is uh, also called extracorporeal photophoresis. It's a procedure in our apheresis suite where they, they pull some blood and they spin it in a centrifuge to separate all the different cells out. And they take the T cells and expose them to a UV light that makes the T cells less active. And then they infuse your blood back into you. And of course, we always have clinical trials where we'll, we're still looking for the best treatment for chronic graft versus host disease. And recent clinical trials have resulted in the FDA approval for some new treatments for us to use with Jacophy, Ibrutinib, and Resoroc for chronic graft versus host disease. When one treatment isn't working, adding more treatments on doesn't necessarily improve the graft versus host disease faster, but it does add more side effects. Unfortunately, with more immune suppression comes more side effects. So some of these we already talked about in the possible problems after transplant in part one. The longer treatment is needed for chronic graft versus host disease, the greater the late effects they contribute to. The goal of chronic graft versus host disease therapy is to prevent permanent organ, organ damage from graft versus host disease that leads to loss of function. And we're also trying to minimize the side effects for treatment, all while we're waiting for graft tolerance to develop. Graft tolerance means your donor's immune system is finally recognized in your body as home and no longer acting out in a way that causes graft versus host disease activity. Here are the highlights I want you to take away from this talk that look a little familiar from part one. Keep it simple. Keep drinking plenty of fluids. Keep eating small, frequent meals. Try to exercise a little bit every day. Stretching is really good for your body, and it helps you be aware of gradual changes that might be re related to graft versus host disease. Keep taking your medications. Uh, so just, just keep that list of daily activities in your mind and take that home with you. Uh, monitor your, your body for changes and report these to your local provider. And over the years later, when you don't need to see your healthcare providers as much, make sure you're still going to them for those health maintenance tasks, like regular checks of your blood pressure and for those cancer screenings. Reach out to your local support systems and keep in contact with them. That's really good to keep your emotional health in check, in recovery. And remember to have patience with yourself. Recovery does not happen overnight but months from now, you will notice a difference. Thank you very much for listening. Please direct any questions to your transplant team or contact long-term follow-up. And remember to call us early to make that appointment for your one-year post-transplant evaluation. Thank you so much.